there's a saying that the present moment is a present. Mm -hmm. It's like a gift. Yes. So you use that present moment and bring the best out of yourself. Hi, my name is Shivam and I am with Mr. Vivek Atre, an ex ice officer, author of two best selling books and a really good motivation speaker as well. And today we're going to talk about emotional intelligence. And I've been working on this field for so long and Mr. Vivek Atre has always been working in this particular area. So I'd love to know from you, sir, what exactly do you define? How do you define emotional intelligence? My definition is the ability to handle people and situations mm -hmm. in a calm and balanced manner. But Daniel Goldman is the boss of emotional intelligence, so he has another one. But handling people and situations is the key. Right, absolutely. Absolutely. And from your experience about emotional, of course, you have been in such a wide domain of work as well. How do you define the part about when it comes, it comes to understanding the emotional part of it and dealing with so many people like that? So, of course, a lot of emotions come into picture for stress, example, anxiety, fear, and so many things that come into picture. In terms of handling people, how do you handle emotions for other people? Because ideally speaking, it's more about us. How we do how we handle emotions for other people? Yeah, first we need to handle our own emotions. Right. And the thing is that we deal mainly with people in life. We don't deal with books or machines That's or right. table chairs. Mm -hmm. People interact with us, they talk to us, they react, they respond. Mm -hmm. So when somebody is upset or somebody is emotional in our presence, right. we have to remain calm. Right. Because if you react, you argue, then it flares up. True. So normally people are unpredictable, mm -hmm. you can't predict what they will do or say mm -hmm. and in that unpredictability you have to remain uh, kind of unflustered mm -hmm. and if you be, if you become uh, you know worried or restless mm -hmm. then you are sending out vibrations which are negative True. and restless. So if people are calm and uh, you help them to be calm, especially if you are a leader, then that is a good job done. So calmness will lead to better decision making, better teamwork and better environment to work. So our job should be basically to add to the calmness levels mm -hmm. instead of creating disturbance in the mind. True, true. That's very true. In fact, from a psychological point of view as well, we end up mirroring the emotion of the person as well. Yes, yes. And somehow if we are in that particular anxiety or fearful state, the other person also mirrors the same emotion. Yes. Which ends up reflecting on their thought process and their behavior as well. So of course, like you mentioned as a leader, it's very much important to have that emotional clarity of mind. Absolutely. But again, like we all are humans eventually and we all have that emotional state as well. Of course, we might end up being fearful or anxious or other emotional state for that matter. So when you are going through that particular emotional state or let's say fear, anxiety, just anything for that matter, how do you manage not projecting it out on, uh, on your behavior, on your personality or not projecting it out on the other person because sometimes it happens. So how do you yeah, Everybody is human. So you will go through your fears, your worries, anxiety, yeah. anger. But uh, if you reduce it, mm. frequency and intensity, then you have won the battle. Nobody can be perfect. Absolutely. Sometimes you will be worried. Mm -hmm. So I find that over the years I become less worried, okay. less uh, angry, mm -hmm. less anxious. Mm -hmm. So I think I worked on it by uh, trying to be more calm, mm -hmm. by trying to meditate, by trying to be a little more, uh, you know, large sighted rather than short sighted. Mm -hmm. Because if you are far-sighted and the overall bigger picture you have in mind, mm -hmm. then you won't be worried about small things. Right. You know, somebody said something at the bus stop or somebody said something four years ago, you are still thinking about it. What is the point? Right, right, right. So we really have to be a little more uh, you know, calm uh, in our mind. Mm -hmm. And if you feel worried and anxious at times, it's okay, it's natural. It should not be too often. And you try to come out of it by maybe remaining a little quiet at that time. Mm -hmm. So if you express yourself too much, yeah. that's also not good. Yeah. But with your near and dear ones, you can probably share also that you're feeling a little anxious about something, it's better. Uh, by losing your temper or cool, it's not really a good idea. Right. It's better to be part of sports or some physical activity. If you're in sports, then you let out your energy in that uh, field. Right. Outdoors, especially outdoors is better than gym also. Right. So then your energy will be uh, expressed. Mm -hmm. And then you don't feel that angry. True. That's my feeling. That's true, that's true, that's true. And that means, of course, the emotional awareness part plays a very important role. Yes, yes. How much you are aware of the emotion. In fact, the Daniel Goldman also talks about it. In fact, a lot of a lot of researchers also talk about the importance of emotional awareness and how they tend to reflect back on our behavior as well. But one thing you mentioned about being mindful. Of course, we all know the power of being mindful and being in this moment to deal with any particular situation. For example, if I'm angry right now, and if I'm mindful about the anger, I can deal with it. Mm -hmm. But sometimes, again, uh, we can talk about a normal instance for that matter, but 
for a person who is coming from a set of trauma, a sort of set of issues or the memories in the life, their past always comes back as a way or finds a way to come back to the present moment and dictates how they should be dealing with this particular moment. Mm. So they kind of their awareness towards a particular moment gets diminished, and that's science basically. The kind of when we're too much driven by a particular threat at that particular moment, our logical mind is taken over by the emotional mind, and that's what exactly happens to every human being. So at that point of time, do you have any particular techniques or things you use ideally to bring your awareness back to the moment? See, one is to work on yourself. The other is to work with others. Like you are working with others. Yes. I am also working with others. So when you work on yourself, you become an example to others. Sure. Whatever I say is not as important as what I am. Okay. If I am calm and I am a role model to others, then they will learn more from watching me and being with me rather than listening to what I say. I can tell them ten points to follow. Mm-hmm. It doesn't work. If they are inspired by somebody's presence that this person is a good personality or is calm or handling his problems well, mm-hmm. so you work on yourself that way, mm-hmm. and you try and uh, emulate whatever you are saying to others to do. Mm-hmm. You try and practice yourself, right. and introspection is the key. Absolutely. So if you introspect that, uh, let me check on every Sunday. Let me see how was I this week. Did I lose my cool? Right. Did I feel scared? Mm-hmm. On Thursday, maybe I was uh, driving too fast because I was in a hurry. I was angry or whatever it is. Then you try to control yourself next time. True. It's better to an- analyze this when you are cool and calm at that time, mm-hmm. not when you are in a situation. Right. In the situation, you can't analyze because you are in the middle of something. Yeah. It is affecting your mind. Right. And regarding mindfulness, uh, it is something which uh, is very important. Being in the present moment, mm-hmm. because we keep running to the future and the past. Yes. And as you said, the past emotions they affect our present. Mm-hmm. Even karma affects. So, if you look at the spiritual part of it, it is your past uh, lives also. Mm-hmm. But even in this life, you may have done something which is affecting your present moment, or somebody may have done something. That's but you are going on remembering it, and it is having a mark on your yes. mind. Yes, yes. So, I think you need to uh, focus more on the bigger picture and the present moment. There is a saying that the present moment is a present. Mm-hmm. It's like a gift. Yes. So, you use that present moment and bring the best out of yourself. There is a great saying to Thich Nhat Hanh. Yeah. He passed away recently. Buddhist saint. So he always focuses on this: walk mindfully, eat mindfully, breathe mindfully. Yeah. Think of this: what you are doing now. Yeah. Don't keep letting your mind race to the future and past. Right. So we tra- we are not perfect. Nobody is perfect, but we keep trying. Yeah. In fact, I and mean, he's a great writer as well, and he's written so much about mindfulness. And in fact, like washing your dishes even mindfully. That's yes, yes, yes. Beautiful yes. aspect of it. Yes. Yeah. So talking about introspection, of course, that's a very important thing. And something we really work upon in the emotional intelligence front as well. There are certain techniques that we generally practice on that I want to share here as well. That uh, there are certain ways through which we can bring our attention back to the present moment. I mean, like when we see a threat that may not be a real threat, but our brain perceives it as a threat, mm-hmm. something like a statement or something like that, and our brain immediately jumps to the emotional component of it and then tries to protect us through mm-hmm. anger, through other emotional state as well. And it's a very funny way to look at it. For example, if a building is on fire, the fireman first works on extinguishing the fire. Rather than asking who caused the fire, obviously. Yeah. That means even in that emotional state, if I am asking myself questions, why did you do this? Why does that always happen to me? How do I ever always end up in this situation? I am always aggravating the anger. Mm. I am aggravating the emotional intensity. Yes. So the goal is to bring myself back to the moment. Yeah. One very powerful technique that I used to practice, and I talk to my clients also about it, is the grounding technique, the five, four, three, two grounding technique. Basically, focusing the five things that you can see, four things that you can touch. Three sounds that you can hear, two things that you can smell, and one thing that you can taste. Yeah. So basically, involving all your sensory organs to bring your awareness back to the moment. So that is a very powerful thing that I have been using, and that is helping me a lot in terms of being mindful and focusing on those areas as well. But yeah, like you mentioned, of course, introspection, understanding where have you come from, and focusing on what exactly in the moment. No, you are right. Absolutely, good technique. And uh, if you are aware, that's the first victory. Absolutely. Then only you can take action. Absolutely, yes. That's a very important part there. Now coming back to the part about leadership again, because again you have been a big leader, and of course you have been inspiring so many people as well. In terms of being a leader, inspiring people, of course a lot of people look up to you. In that domain, what are the things you feel person who is wanting to be a leader, who is wanting to get into the same shoes as you are? What are the tips and techniques you want to share with people so that they can get into the same line of understanding, being calm, being aware, and focusing on their routine like that? This is all a battle of the mind, right? Uh, we are looking at Virat Kohli today. He is not playing as well. IPL is not doing well, right? Yes. His mind is affected. Yes. 
by the failures or whatever it is. Of course, they are playing too much cricket, so he's also tired, exhausted. Even India's top other players, Jadeja, Rohit and all, did not have a good IPL. The mind is playing tricks. When our mind is fresh, positive, we will do better in the field also. In work, in the presentation, in the sports field, in our exam, etc. Et so, the best way is to keep on analyzing as a leader. Is my mind effective? Is it fresh? Is it creative? Or is it burdened by what is happening around me? Am I reacting to situation or am I leading the situation? So, as a leader, I have to have a vision. I have to be ahead of the curve. So, I can't be reacting, responding to what is happening all the time. I need to lead the change. And then I have a team. Each of the people in my team are different. So, let us say there are three people in my team. All three of them are different. All three of them have different personalities. So I need to get the best out of each. One of them may be an aggressive go-getter. One may be calm and quiet. One may be a shy worker. So we need to know how to get the best out of all three. So I feel that one-to-one -one pepping up is important. Feeling uh, that uh, the other person is feeling that you are communicating as a leader with them. Even the junior most person should feel that the leader is communicating. You know, pat on the back, how are you doing? How was yesterday? That's good enough. If your peer is bringing you water and nimbubani, mm -hmm. you can commend him. Well done. Kick time pe tum le hai. You're a good chap. Something like that. These are appreciation modules. Yes, yes, yes. You can also basically try and be more creative as a leader. Mm -hmm. It's a wide field. Leadership is a wide field. But being creative, innovative, having a little bit of more energy than others. Mm -hmm. The leader should be someone who is so energetic that everybody wants to be like him or her. Right? The leader cannot be a laggard or you know slow. Yes. So you have to be very uh, calm and confident. Mm -hmm. You have to be balanced, creative. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to be empathetic also as a leader. Think of others. Mm -hmm. There are many other things, but these are probably some of the main points. Absolutely. And do you think so, uh, that being a leader also comes with understanding what are the strengths you're carrying with yourself? Yes. Because ideally, again, we are all human beings and we all are imperfect human beings. And weaknesses also. Weakness, exactly. Supposing my weakness is that I keep thinking what others are thinking. Right. That, you know, those people are thinking about this. Mm -hmm. They might watch me now. Mm -hmm. What will I do? Mm -hmm. So then my performance is affected by that. Absolutely. So I am uh, conscious of other people. Mm -hmm. Then I am not being myself. Right. Right. So I need to reduce that consciousness of other people. Mm -hmm. And uh, that could be a weakness. Anger management could be a problem yes. that I'm not able to anger, manage my anger. Uh, another one could be that sometimes I feel sluggard or lazy. Yes. So I'm not saying these are my weaknesses, yeah, but some people could have these weaknesses. Yes. Absolutely. And these weaknesses, you don't need to talk about them, but you need to be aware of them. Right. And then your strengths, as you said, you need to be aware of your strengths. Yeah. So if communication is your strength, right. then communicate often with your team. Right. Don't overdo it, but make sure that they understand what you are trying for the organization mm -hmm. and inspiration is also important True. so i need to uh, come up with some quotes come up with some cheerfulness mm -hmm. uh, pat somebody on the back encourage them and criticism is also required mm -hmm. but firmness is better than anger True. so if i humiliate someone that person is not going to team is not going to do well right. only if i encourage but i'm firm mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. that sort of thing should be there yeah. But not that I'm, you know, losing my cool and temper also. So balance is the key and then uh, you bring out the best in your team by what you are, not what you say. Exactly, yes. So that ownership and understanding is very, very important. Yeah. In fact, that reminds me of the very important thing that is very often talked about in leadership. About the kind of environment that we've always grown up in India. The, when you see examples of leaders, you always remember our politicians as leaders. So we don't remember our CEOs and founders, we remember our politicians as leaderships. And you talk about the way leaders communicate, it's often in a very aggressive way. So we have always analyzed and um, we've understood the idea of leadership as aggressiveness. That you have to be pushy, you have to be somewhat aggressive, you have to be angry and that's why you get concerned, that's how you get concerned. But ideally if you think about it and look at it, the other founders, CEOs of big companies for that matter. Their way of communication is also assertive, like you said as well, firm, you have to talk about it in a firm manner. So I think the definition of leadership as well, we have to develop and shift from an aggressive mindset to an assertive mindset. That you don't have to always talk out in an aggressive manner to make things people let people understand what exactly they are trying to say. But more in an assertive tone, like you mentioned as well, that you don't have to always be angry, but tell about what exactly is happening and then give them that 
appreciation to work in that part as well. Yeah, so in my view, politicians are not really leaders. Absolutely. Yes. And as a former IAS officer, I can tell you, so <laughs> I've seen better leaders in the IAS, right. in the corporate world, in the sports world, mm -hmm. in even authors are great leaders because they are writers. Yes. And uh, professionals who are lawyers, architects, they are leaders. Yes, absolutely. Academicians, educationists are leaders. Mm -hmm. Politicians, maybe some of them are leaders. Yeah. So the point is, aggression is not the only thing. And you're right in saying that leadership is not about being aggressive. Yes. It is about taking people along, showing them the way if you can, taking feedback also. Communication is two-way. Yes. So leader has to be receptive also. Mm -hmm. That my junior most person may come up with a brilliant idea, I need to be receptive. Yes. So I think I need to be conscious of the fact that I am the leader. Mm -hmm. I have to inspire people. I have to do my best for the organization, but I have to take them along also. Yes. I cannot be running in the fifth gear if everybody in the second gear. Mm -hmm. Sachin Tendulkar yes. was the captain of India, the most brilliant batsman of yes. the modern time. Yes, yes. But he thought everybody should be Sachin Tendulkar. Right. They cannot be. Absolutely. So everybody is not the same level. Mm -hmm. So he his expectations were too high. Yeah. Whereas Dhoni, mm -hmm. Dhoni's expectations were not that high. He yes. knew what is it takes to become the best captain. Right. He could bring out the best from them. Yes. Mike Brearley used to be captain of England. Mm -hmm. He was not a very good batsman, yeah. but he was a very good leader of men. Yes. So that is the key as a leader that you bring out the best from your team and organization. Mm -hmm. And even if you are an independent motivational speaker like I am, mm -hmm. I need to show that leadership to the youth. Right. And if I am going to start behaving sloppily or start swearing at people at the airport, yeah. what is the point? You know, people argue at uh, railway station, airport, market, uh, road rage. Yes. If I do one thing like that, yes. there is a photo, like Vivek Atre is behaving like this, he is going to motivate. I can't be like that. Absolutely. So I have to be an inspiring leader. Yes. That is the most important thing. True, 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 truly said. And another thing about, we talk about the whole fact of emotional intelligence and bringing on the aspect of it. One important thing that people miss out is the aspect of emotional intelligence in relationships. Because ideally, in the whole race of getting and being successful, you often miss out on the part about maintaining relationships. Yeah, yeah. So how important do you think is it in relationships? Sure. Relationships, as I said, we work with people, we live with people. Yes. So at home as well as at work, yes. you need to have harmony. Right. And in Punjabi, there is a saying that uh, harmony tab aati hai jab har manni. Ek ne har man li, to har man man la. Kya hota hai ki harmony is basically about acceptance. Mm -hmm. You accept the other person for what they are. True. You cannot expect them to be perfect. You are not perfect, they are not perfect. Mm -hmm. So your understanding and friendship has to develop in a relationship. Mm -hmm. jo, even when people get married, yes. honeymoon is over. Yes. Then after a few years, what is left? Mm -hmm. It is a friendship. Yes. Well, otherwise, you can't live together. So if your friendship is strong, you will overlook certain negativities. So I think relationships are about accommodating others' weaknesses. Right. Patience. Right. Understanding. Mm -hmm. Realizing you are also not perfect. Yes. Other person is also not. So you have an understanding and the relationship will last forever. Mm -hmm. But if you are short tempered, choti si baat gussa, then you won't be able to. So we need to retain that uh, patience and tolerance, right. which sadly is going away. Mm -hmm. That's why the number of separations are increasing. True. So tolerance and patience, both in the parents and in the young couple. Mm -hmm. And at work also, you have to be the same. Work relationship has to be professional, understanding. Yes. Somebody made a mistake also, you have to accommodate that person. Right, right. So I think uh, we really need to be understanding of others mm -hmm. in order to have good relationships. Right, absolutely. And this is something that I personally see in a lot of my clients as well. That we need to be aware of the triggers as well. Yeah. For example, I might have my own set of triggers, my partner might have a different set of triggers. And unless and until I'm aware of their set of triggers, I might end up saying certain things that might trigger them really bad, right. which might lead to a lot of conflict. I might not be aware of that part because for me it's a very risky thing, a thing to joke about. Mm. But for them it's a very good trigger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think over time it's also important to understand your triggers as well as the partner's triggers yeah, yeah. as well. So as you get to that particular line of confrontation and awareness as well. Your sensibilities and sensitivities have to be high. True. Absolutely. That emotion question as well. Right. So it was really it was good, it was a good part about understanding and focusing on the emotional component of relationships. In fact, I think dimension, if you talk about the dimensions of life that you focus upon, Work is one part of it, definitely one part of it, but so are relationships. And somehow we end up forgetting that how relationships are also defining a part of our life. That means we all are social animals and we all have that particular emotional and physical need of certain connecting with people. And that means if you are totally ignoring the aspect of relationships and maintaining the quality of relationships, 
it might end up reflecting back on every other individual yeah. as well. So it's important that you focus on that part of it. And like right, you said that yeah, understanding and awareness is very important. Very important. Right. So it was really good talking to you about all the different components of emotional intelligence and leadership, relationships, and other areas as well. It was really good having you and being here as well. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Shivam. Good interview, and I think I enjoyed the conversation, especially since we're talking about a very higher aspect of life. Yes, yes. And one last key is that one should be cheerful, absolutely, smiling and uh, trying to be, uh, you know, uh, whatever happens, ups and downs of life, come and go. Yes. We'll try and be cheerful all the time. Yes, yes. That's a really good thing. Thank you so much. Okay.